<laughs> All right, welcome, welcome, and welcome to my live people, and also welcome to the beautiful people watching the replay because I've had a lot of emails and DMs to say, Is there going to be a replay? Because you couldn't make this time on a Tuesday, which is totally fine. So, whichever way you're, whether you're zooming in sometime in the future, or whether you're here in the present now, I just want to give you a big warm welcome. I really am so glad that you are here. And oh, hang on a minute. Let me just make sure you're all muted. <laughs> da, da, da. Let's mute everybody. Okay. All right. Otherwise, you know, I said you wouldn't be heard. Well, then you might be. That wouldn't be very good, would it? All right. We should be sweet now. All right. Sorry about that. Okay. So the next step after this webinar is to book a free Primalista 30-minute call with either myself or the Primal Alternative Calls team, which are real-life Primalistas. So we've got Manda from the Gold Coast, who's on the calls team. She's actually in the webinar today, which is so cool. Uh, so you can say hi to Amanda. Um, and we also have Rosie from Western Australia. She's been with Primal Alternative for five years. And we have Ash in Queensland. Um, and she's been a Primalista for the last 18 months. So you'll be speaking with either me, who's the founder of Primal Alternative, or you'll be speaking with somebody who was once like you and at a webinar like this, finding out about this opportunity um, and then took the leap and is now doing it. And I know Amanda has told me before, she was on the fence for four years and she thinks it's a brilliant mo business model and wish she'd joined earlier. That's right, isn't it, Amanda? <laughs> So the link to book a Primalista call, I'm just going to pop this in the chat group. Hopefully that's going to work. There we go. Um, yes, so that's the link to book a call. Um, and that is the next step. So on the Primalista call, what we'll be doing is getting clear on what you're looking for. So this is where you find out the information and on the call we're not going to be telling you about how it all works right we'll be finding out what you're looking for and we'll be finding out if the primalista license can help and we'll be doing things like talking about your local council we'll be looking at potential stockists we'll be looking at how much you want to earn and how you're going to fit this into your week we'll share all the details of the license with you and answer your questions and if it's a good fit we'll offer you the opportunity to join us so before we, um, oh, hang on a minute. Next thing I just wanted to say is that I really want you to stick around until the end. Hopefully going to punch this out in 45. If I don't get too chatty, you know, I can sometimes get a bit chatty. Um, but please do stick around at the end because I can't wait to share with you the bonuses. The bonuses are so wicked that are currently on offer. There's literally never been a better price and a better bonus um, to join Primal Alternative, which is good, right? Because in the world, everything else is going up and you're getting less for your money. But now here you get more for your dollar, which is so good. Plus, I have a special door prize for one lucky live attendee today. So you're interested in starting a bake from home business with Primal Alternative? How exciting. It is really going to be one of the best decisions you'll ever make. But before we dive right into the five simple steps, let me introduce myself to you. So my name is Helen Marshall, but you can call me H. Please call me H. I'll turn that light off. Um, even my dad calls me H now. If someone calls me Helen, I feel like I'm in trouble. Um, so please, poor old Joe Witten, she always tries to call me H but she forgets. So she calls me Helen, sorry, H, <laughs> which is quite cute, <laughs> which is quite cute. Um, and I'm a certified primal health coach and I've got over 30 years experience in the health and wellness industry. Um, I started out as an aerobics instructor. I've been a PT and a fitness instructor working with women in gyms, finding out what their goals were around their lifestyle, why they wanted to, you know, kick their fitness goals, smash their fitness goals, um, and as a, in my uh, corporate career, I was a recruitment uh, consultant and a business manager for a large recruitment company, both in the UK, which is where I'm from, if you're wondering, what's this weird accent, and also in Australia. So I've been interviewing women 
and asking them what they're looking for from, from a career point of view, from a fitness lifestyle point of view, since I was 14. <laughs> and that includes over 850 primer lister calls with women just like you. So I really do feel, you know, like I have a good insight as to what women are looking for. And let me tell you, it really is not the point and shoot nine to five, five days a week. It really doesn't seem to suit a lot of um, women. Yeah. So interesting. So no doubt we'll talk about that on the call too. So I've had my own podcast. I've also spoken on uh, over 25 different podcasts. I've been on the stage at key wellness events like the Nutrition Summit, which has just had another round. Looked amazing in Kingscliff, uh, as well as the Wellness Summit, a couple of those over the years and wellness base camps. Have you been to any of the wellness, um, those events? I'd love to know. Let me know in the chat. And I've had my own food as medicine health transformation. And my guess is, so have you. Are you here? Because at some point in your life, you've had to ditch grains or gluten or dairy or eggs or nuts or all of them and have to do a little bit of healing with food. Let me know if that's you and if you can relate in the chat group. So what about primal alternative? That is a very uh, well Googled thing now. What is Primalista? Who owns Primal Alternative? That's me. So um, as you can see from this slide, Primal Alternative has been established for 78 years. <laughs> okay, all right, it's been eight years. That's been a slight technical error there, a slight editing error. And the license is in its sixth year, and it's been successfully replicated in four countries across the world. So I'm in Australia. There's quite a lot of confusion about where I actually am because I live in a town called Denmark, not in Scandinavia, Denmark in Western Australia. And I've got this accent. So I got a DM yesterday saying, is this business model suitable for Australia? Yes, it is. I'm in Australia. My focus, my passion, my heart is in Australia. But purely through organic means, you know, through podcasts, word of mouth, the fact that, you know, quite a lot of big food uh, influencers love the primal alternative concept. We have got people who are listening and following in New Zealand, Australia and the UK. And we've got primalistas there as well. How cool is that? So we've got 33 streamlined products um, across four different product lines. So people think of us as bread, but that's probably only about 20% of what we produce. And I'll show you the, the range in a moment. We've got over 400 stockists and we are the world's leading bake from home business. Like there's nothing else like this out there. Is there, have you seen anything else like this? Um, I haven't. It's really unique. And it's one of those things that you, you quite a lot of people come to me and say, I've been looking for something and then this popped up and I knew this was it. But it's not something you would go out Googling, right? But this business has helped over 270 now, actually, people like you get started in their own home-based primal alternative business. So we're just looking at a few um, food as medicine. Oh, oh, that's one of my little affirmations. Shall I read you that? I am transforming. Yeah, I like that. I'll turn that off now because once you see one, it keeps sending you a million. So we've got wheat and dairy free, GF since 2013, lactose intolerant. Yes, you are my people. I'm hearing you. And then just when you think you're nailing it, something else happens. Thank you, perimenopause, for throwing all these curveballs at me and helping me deepen into my healing journey. I'm so grateful. <laughs> Ah, Perry, Perry menopausal sisters in the house. All right, enough about me. What about you? So I reckon that you, you know, I want to look at um, why you're here. Like, and I'm guessing, and what I'd love to know from your, um, in the chat, if you let me know in the chat, because every single primalista has had different motivations for starting their own business. And the key thing is that, their priority to make a change really was like just a couple of millimeters ahead of their doubts and fears and worries and the when then monster and all of that other stuff that we, you know, hold ourselves back with. Right. So tell me in the chat, why are you here today? 
Is it because you've lost the passion for your nine to five and you're looking for a change? Maybe you could do your job, stood on your head, but it just doesn't light you up anymore. Or maybe you could do your job, but, you know, Debbie in accounts is a toxic bitch ruining your life, <laughs> right? Work environments can sometimes not be the most nurturing nervous system, pleasant places for us, right? Is it because you've got a family and you want to make some extra money from home without having to take on massive debt or have massive overheads or staff or any of that other, you know, hassle? Is it because you'd like to build a new stream of income or side hustle doing something you enjoy without having to, and no disrespect to any, any MLM businesses at all, but something that you can just do that's just, just, you know, you don't have to hassle people in DMs or do like, here's a pink drink, DM me for more details. You know, you just, it's just baking and selling. It's just really straightforward, transparent. Is it that you've always been interested in becoming your own boss, but just haven't known how to get started or got tripped up on things like fonts or logos or coming up with a unique, unique concept or being able to nail the pricing? Is it because you haven't achieved the career goals you set out for yourself? Big deal. You know what? I'd get out of the um, corporate industry as soon as I could, as soon as I realized it was not for me. Or is it all of the above? Let me know in the chittity chattity. I'm going to dine to see what you say. So we've got exploring possibilities. Magda loves cooking and eating. <laughs> see if I could earn some extra money. Somebody's looking to support their health coaching business. Perfect. That's how I started. And that this part of the business just exploded. But I'll tell you a bit more about that in a minute. Um, curiosity, love cooking wholesome food and sharing it with others haven't considered the business side of things. Um, we've got also retired, committed to a health, healthy lifestyle. So happy to cook and earn some extra dollars. Left work in retail at the start of, you know what, to support grandchildren with shutdown of school. Oh, good for you. Good on you. Amazing. What an amazing group of people. Can you, like, even though, <laughs> even though we're not talking to each other, I can feel the energy and, oh, it's good, isn't it? Yes, like-minded people. Mm, it's my it's my bag. I love it. <laughs> so what's stopping you from moving ahead either now or in the past? Is it money? Is it time? I'll get I'll give you a little bit of a spoiler. It's never money or time. It's never money or time. So it's priority, working towards your highest priorities. But what do you feel? You might feel it's money, you might feel it's time. Is it lack of know-how? Is it family or current job restraints? Is it uncertainty in the world right now? That's a new one. Mm, just added that one in in 2022. <laughs> or is it fear, self-doubt or lack of confidence? So same gig, let me know in the chat. So whatever your reasons are for being here, you are definitely in the right place. And I'm going to share with you the exact steps you can take to build a freedom-based business, baking delicious food from your very own kitchen. So before we move on to that, everyone's saying fear and lack of confidence, bit of all of the above. Yes, a bit of all, lack of confidence, outlay of money has me doubtful. All right. Thank you for that. All right. So what we're going to do, this is what you are about to discover so the method I'm going to outline has worked time and time again. So you don't need to worry about whether you have got what it takes to be successful. You don't need to stress over where you should begin, whether you have the right sales and marketing skills, or whether you can create a product people like enough to pay money for, because I already know you do have what it takes. And I celebrate you for taking the first huge step, right, by showing up and watching this webinar today to find out more. So thank you again for joining me. All you need is a little guidance and support on your journey, and you'll be able to achieve your goals in no time at all. And I've created this webinar to help you, uh, to help you make the path to success as simple and straightforward as possible. So you're about to discover the exact steps you can take to build a successful baking business from home. What you absolutely must do 
if you want to grow your side hustle into a full-time business. How to, how to choose the right equipment to ensure you bake super tasty restaurant quality food at home. The most common mistakes new business owners make and why over half fail in the first three years. So in about 45 minutes time, you'll have all the info you need to begin your journey as a primer lister and grow your own super successful baking business from the ground up. But let me be specific and say that during this webinar, I'm going to be demonstrating how you can build your bake from home business with the Primer Lister license. If you're looking for a DIY option, stick around for a comparison. So building your own successful baking business from home can be a daunting thought. And I'm not going to lie, at times it will be challenging. You'll need to roll up your sleeves and put in the hard work. But achieving success can be a lot more manageable when you break down the process into smaller baby steps, right? So I've condensed everything you need into five easy to follow steps. And here they are. Step number one, come up with a plan. A plan is absolutely vital if you're going to succeed in baking from home. To start off, you'll need to decide what type of baking business you want to create. What do you want to sell? Who do you want to sell it to? Who's your target market? What's your niche? Primal Alternative is made up of four streamlined product lines. So we've got uh, ready mix, uh, ready made bread, pizza bases, and wraps, cookies, pastry, and jellies, granola, uh, and packet mixes, which are dry versions of our ready made products with the same great profit margin, but with a longer shelf life. And we also have a whole foods range. So if you think of the co op concept, where primalisters sell on their bulk ingredients to customers at a marked up price. There is a short list of food you can bake from home. And I know this is a massive question because it is without doubt the most common comment, com common comment, <laughs> that's hard to say, on my Facebook ads is you can't do this from home. Um, you need, you know, blah, 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 commercial kitchen, da, 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 da. And you can do this from home, but you can only do certain things from home. So anything that you want to bake from home needs to be low risk or not potentially hazardous. So all primal alternative products have been lab tested and our food safety program shows evidence that they are low risk, which is super helpful. Have we got anything? With them? Yeah, she could have had a picture of that there, couldn't I? That would have been really helpful. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, it can be really helpful to have that evidence when you're getting your approvals from council. And as a food producer, deciding which products to choose can be difficult. When I first started, I did ready-made meals, broths, nut milk, kombucha, as well as the breads, cookies, pizzas, and jellies. And even though being told I could only produce low-risk foods from home felt like a kick in the guts at the time, it really was a blessing. So I started completely illegally and got busted, but it's all good. And my husband, Mike, said at the time, focus on nailing a small range of products and get known for doing that really well. It's true, right? Focus, you know, be niche. Don't try and be all the things to all the people because guess what? What happens? You get burnt out and you can't do it from home anyway. So don't do that. <laughs> so if you haven't already, check out the product range on the Primal Alternative website and have a good look at the products. I'm not going to go through them all now because it's too near lunchtime and you're all going to get hungry. So as a Primalista, you can choose what you bake and sell. So if you think, oh my goodness, 33 products, don't worry about that. You can choose what you bake and sell. You can also choose where you want to sell to and how much time you want to devote to your business. Yes, you can go gangbusters, be a baking machine and bake five days a week, but most primalisters want to start out small and build up over time. Keeping it streamlined and niche. Hang on, there we go. I knew I, was, I wasn't just going to bore you with one slide for 20 minutes, goodness me. Right, so keeping it streamlined and niche is key to long-term success. Too many diverse products, as I said before, will leave you disillusioned and burnt out. Trust me, I've done it. And there are many reasons I believe healthy alternatives are the best choice. And I know, I don't know if I'm going to talk about this later on in my presentation, in my prezzo, but, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty. Food prices are going up, fuel prices are going up. 
what are we finding? We're finding that people are still buying these foods. Speaking to um, people that own health food shops and business health health food businesses, people are still stuff's going up. People are still buying it. Why is that? Because people prioritize their health. It's all to do with their priorities and their um, what they value, their values, what they value the most. So. Just because food and fuel prices are going up, are you going to go out and eat wheat bix for breakfast again? No. <laughs> are you going to go and buy tip-top bread again? And that puff pastry? No, you're not going to, right? And this, you know, it, it, people feel like oh, it's a very niche, very niche market. Not many people want to, you know, ditch gluten, ditch dairy, ditch eggs. But I saw a very interesting stat on the Australian Bureau of Statistics the other day which said there's over like about 20% of Australians have got dietary restrictions, right? That is a growing niche. And 45% said the range of natural food options in the supermarket is insufficient. I agree with that stat, do you? Like in the supermarket, come on. Like I'll go to, don't get me wrong, I do go to Woolies, but I go to Woolies for my junk food, for my chips, for the kids and my lollies and my coconut milk and my cat food, my tampons, (laughs) right? That's, you know, kitchen roll. Those are the sort of things that I'm getting from Woolies. But the reality is that most supermarket aisles are laden with food that's comprised of three key ingredients, wheat, dairy, and sugar. Have you had that realization? It's you, when you do, you go, oh, I can't believe it. Wheat, dairy, and sugar. Why? Because it's cheap and there's a big profit margin on it. And two, it's got a long shelf life. And really, most food industry uh, companies, that is, that is what it's all about. It doesn't matter if it's healthy. It's very, it's very hard, isn't it, getting red-pilled on the food industry and waking up. Um, but what do you think? I want to know what do you think. Do you think uh, that there is a growing market for people seeking grain-free, healthy alternatives? that are convenient. Like we don't want to do everything ourselves from scratch. Let me know in the chat. So with the growing rise in varying dietary requirements, there is a growing market for healthy homemade alternatives. So where could you sell your primal alternative products to? Let's brainstorm some of this in the chat. So first of all, have a think about where, oh, all right. So here I am. I did say I wasn't going to talk to you about the range, but here we are. Um, this is what we've got. Go and have a look at all the lovely pictures on the website, but some are just delicious. We have something primal alternative in our day every day. Um, this morning it was pancakes. Um, what have we got for dinner tonight? No primal alternative for dinner tonight, but tomorrow we are having chicken tikka, the beautiful salad, and we're going to use the wraps instead of the like the roti. And then on Friday we're having pies with the uh, quirky cooking uh, pastry. Can't wait. Delicious. So yummy. So yummy. All right. So that there we go. So I'm just trying to keep up with my own slides. So <laughs> think about where you shop, right? Because you are an ideal primal alternative customer. You know, um, you hear about you should get to know your ideal customer avatar if you want to do well in your business. Well, that's easy, right? Just think about what you like and what's important to you <laughs> because you are an ideal primal alternative customer. So the places that primal alternative does really well at are places like farmers markets, health food shops, cafes, pizza shops, not obviously um, the big chains um big franchises like Domino's, but gourmet legit pizza shops independent grocers like your igas um food works farmer jacks um friendship networks and online groups um a very very good place to get started um so what i suggest you want to do is to come up with at least three potential stockists that aren't already being stocked by another primalista How do you find that out? Go to primalalternative.com forward slash stockists and see, type in your suburb and you'll see where the primal um, alternative stockists are in your area. But don't worry because there are endless potential stockists. So start making a note on your phone of places you spot when you're out and about. I literally walk down the street going, there's a potential stockist, there's a potential stockist, there's another one. There's no geographical territory as a primalista, which is a good thing. 
because it means you really get to be the boss of how big you want to grow your business without being a slave to every stockist within a certain postcode. Primalisters' existing stockists are protected as other primalisters cannot approach an existing primal alternative stockist. Not that you'd want it anyway, right? Because the thing I hear the most on a primalister call from potential primalisters is that they don't want to step on anyone's toes. Now, this collaborative ethos works in real life as primalisters charge the same price and agree in the license to source their own stockists. It's actually a real bonus to have a few primalisters in your area, as you'll have someone to cover for you when you're sick or you go on holiday, someone to share bulk orders with or big events, and somebody locally to go for a couple with who gets it. So I love this post, um, this quote from Primalister Jim, who is one of my two uh, primal misters ever. Um, and, you know, it is actually a real bonus um, to have other people nearby and also for someone else to share that job satisfaction of baking healthy food. Um, you know, like it is immensely satisfying to create these beautiful products. A full day baking with love is very fulfilling. And it really does feel fantastic to not only have your own business, but to be making a difference in the world and helping people on their health and wellness journey through food. And at the end of the day, you can lie your head down on the pillow knowing that what you do benefits your community. Plus, it's so much easier to sell something that you actually believe in. If you love clean eating and healthy living, then baking yummy, nutritious food is the way to go. And if this you know, the last two or three years has given us anything. It's the time to re-evaluate what's really important. On call after call after call, I'm hearing from people who are in jobs they can do stood on their head, but they feel so unfulfilled. Or work that's taking them away from their families and their home, or actually costing them money to do. Like I spoke to a really high-flying exec, wonderful woman from WA, and um, she was just telling me how, you know, she's working 13 hours a day. She has to drive 45 minutes to get to work. So there's the fuel, there's the parking, there's Uber Eats every night. It's just her and a cat. Uh, she doesn't even want the stuff from Uber Eats, um, but she just has to eat it. It's just like sustaining her, but it's expensive. She doesn't get to go to the uh, Pilates class at nine o'clock, you know, just things like that. It's just like, at what cost? At what cost is this career, you know, on your health, on your relationships, on your mental health, everything, you know? Yeah. Or being at the mercy of a boss and being at the threat of being stood down. All right. Okay. So that concludes step one. Can you say again how to see the stockists? Yes, I can. So it's primalalternative.com forward slash stockists. Yes. On the website. There you go. I'll put that link in here. Hopefully, and so oh, sometimes my little hype, I have little um shortcut links, you know, because she's typing primalalternative.com forward slash stockist forward slash shop forward slash primalisters forward slash webinar <laughs> forward slash replay. <laughs> All right, there you go, Norelli. You can have a look, and that is something we will go through on the primalister call. So, mm. coffee's gone cold. <coughs> <laughs> All right, step two, take care of the paperwork. Right, as exciting as it is to start your own business, there are some tedious tasks you have to take care of before you get to the fun part. So you will need to register your business. So you'll need to apply for an Australian business number, which is a unique number that identifies your business to the government as well as other people you do business with, such as suppliers and stockists. Um, there's assistance with all of this, right? And, and also the right link to click. So, because it's free getting an ABN, but, you know, people try and make, make money out of it. So you got to look out. So it'll guide you safely down the right path. Create your brand name. Your brand name will promote recognition of your product in the community. When customers see a product that features your brand, they'll know what to expect. Your primal alternative business will be called primal alternative by your name. So primal alternative by Neroli, primal alternative by Tracy, primal alternative by Lynn, 
fun, isn't it? Does it make you have butterflies when you hear that? I think it's exciting. Um, so as I mentioned before, prime listers don't have geographical territory. So keep the location out of your business, um, out of the title. Getting your food business license. So to bake from home, your kitchen needs to be inspected by your local environmental health officer or EHO for short. And you'll need a food business registration before you start baking. So surfaces need to be sealed and ingredients need to be stored in rodent free containers, usually plastic. So I've created the Prime Lister license. So you could get started in your own food business quicker than if you started from scratch all on your own some. And um, today I wanted to share a bit more about this cool tool in our food safety program because it's one of the biggest assets that you get when you become uh, a Prime Lister. So it's a, oh, hang on a minute, where is it? There it is, uh, pictured there. It's a um, 186 page branded PDF that you can share with your EHO to help you get your food business registration. And essentially it shows how the primal alternative products are low risk and not potentially hazardous, therefore safe enough to bake from your home kitchen. And it's a document that has been created over the last six years with food techs, with environmental health officers um, and lab technicians. And inside what you'll see is everything that your environmental health officer is looking for. So it'll be the scope, which is small batch, artisan, hand finished. It'll show them the processing method, the packaging, which is compostable cellulose, and also the storage and shelf life and the food safety information and the likely risk, which is low. It also shows lab testing, water activity, standard plate counts, yeasts, molds, E. coli, etc., and analysis and recommendations by independent food techs showing products as low risk. So what do you need to know to be safe? This is something I ask, get asked a lot. What are the council looking for? Um, so they'll be looking for personal health and hygiene and washing your hands. Food handling skills. No pretty straightforward how to receive and store your ingredients so that would make something as simple as having a separate uh, shelf in the pantry a shepherd a shepherd a shepherd i've turned into james bond a separate shelf in the fridge um, and if you don't have space i had a teeny tiny kitchen i hear that a lot as well oh i, I will start this business when i've renovated my kitchen you don't need i was working oh it started off in a shed like it was a dwelling but it was a shed with a tiny kitchen, I had 1.2 meter um, bench space and oh, my pantry was like the size of a shoe box. So I used to store all my ingredients in those, you know, those stackable plastic boxes from Bunnings? Fine. Rodent proof, separate. Council, council loved it. They'll also be looking for transportation and online shop dispatch uh, food product recall in the unlikely event of a product recall and customer service protocol, right? So it's an awesome document and I can't wait. I love, love sharing that with you when you become a Prima Lista. A lot of potential Prima Listers are concerned about applying for their food business registration and they are convinced that their council is the worst. Everyone says that to me. Oh, well, yeah. Oh, no, my council. Mm, 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 mm. However, in the Primalista survey, 78% of Primalistas said that getting council approval was a fairly straightforward process. It's common to get an initial no if you just ring up your EHO. You'll have a much better result when you go about it the right way and give the environmental health officer the information they're looking for. Besides, you can lean on me and our awesome community of Primalistas who've already walked this path They've already been approved. So we've had food business registrations granted in all states and territories in Australia, in Yorkshire uh, and Scotland, in the United Kingdom, the South Island and North Island of New Zealand, Idaho, Tennessee and Wyoming and Florida in the US. It truly is turning into a global business. You'll also need to organize insurance. So product and public liability insurance is vital for bake from home from a bake from home business. So it's going to prevent it's going to protect you in the event that someone is harmed by one of your products. For example, if they get sick after eating something you've baked. Now, that's obviously something no one ever expects to happen, but you need to be covered in the unlikely event that it does. 
which insurer you go to is a personal choice. I recommend doing an online search and comparing prices as well as what's being covered before taking out a policy. One of our Prime Listers, Prime Lister Chicken, is an insurance broker and in her fifth year with Primal Alternative, and she's helped probably most of our Aussie Prime Listers sort out their insurance. So if you just want to go, ah, oh, you do it, you that's one thing you can do, and that's taken care of. And that's about $50 a month. All right, so that's boring paperwork out of the way. And seriously, how daunting does that all feel? You're like, oh my goodness, that sounds so hard. I'm trying to navigate that by yourself as a, like a lone ranger. That's hard work. That might stop you ever getting started in your own business. And it all sounds wretched and treacherous, but once it's done, it's done. You only need to have that once. And now comes the fun part. It's time to turn on your food processor, whip out your apron and get baking. And no, a Thermomix is not essential. Although, hey, it's a good excuse to buy one as a business expense. But seriously, I recommend just starting what you currently mix cakes with. Some primalists even just start out with bowls and electric whisks. <sighs> so let me briefly explain how I created my recipes. So back in 2014, I suffered a health crisis. So I ditched grains. Uh, this was my health crisis, the shopping list of disasters, right? So I switch, uh, so little up, where am I? Yes, yes, yes. I ditched grains, sugar, and seed oils in favor of whole foods, sunshine, sleep, and nature. And the results were incredible. I felt more focused and full of energy than I ever had. It was literally like somebody just lifted up this veil and life was like on a different dimension. So shortly after I became a primal health coach to help other people reclaim their quality of life by making the same easy peasy uh, diet and lifestyle changes. However, people found the lifestyle difficult to follow. They couldn't go without comforting staples like pizza, bread, cookies, and pastry, like plants and animals, plants and animals, plants and animals. It's all right. But what about when you just want a slice of toast or you just want a pizza? Or you just want a cookie for goodness sake. So I'd already mastered primal alternatives to the foods we loved because Mike told me we weren't going to go primal without cookies. So I took our favorite family chocolate chip cookie recipe, swapped out the margarine for organic butter the self-raising flour for almond meal, the white sugar for coconut sugar, and that horrid supermarket cooking chocolate, the 70% cacao dark chocolate. The resulting cookie was sensational, way better than the original, and it left us feeling amazing. Now, I knew I needed to master pizza and bread too. And I found primal baking much easier because there's no kneading or proving or rising or any sticky dough to clean up afterwards. Just chuck it all in and mix it and bake. Faff free, as I like to say. Faff free as in fuss free, not fat free. <laughs> so there were many, many fails along the way. And luckily, we've got chickens to feed the failed recipes too. Look, I screwed up on pricing too initially, selling for less than it cost me to make the product because I didn't know how to cost a product. I nearly got tripped up on what to call the brand, which color, which fonts, ah, all the stuff that really presents as a massive hurdle for many wannabe food producers. But all of the hard work has been taken care of with the Primalist license. There's no need for you to trip all over the things that I fell over and no need to reinvent the wheel. Now, I would love to show you how simple the primal alternative recipes are. You don't need a catering or a chef background to become a primalista. The recipes are simply measure, mix and bake. And we can crank out many products in a short space of time this way. Also, as the loaves are smaller than a regular loaf uh, and not sensitive to opening and closing the oven door, unlike conventional baking, we can fit 12 loaves in the oven at once. Yes, 12. You only need a domestic oven. And I, whether you've got a 600 oven or a 900 oven, both are as good as each other. So let me show you a little baking demo. Let's make pizza bases. So I'm going in first of all with the cashew nut milk. Then I'm going in with my eggs. 
Then I am going to add the grain-free baking powder. And now in with the salt. Don't forget the coconut oil. So I'm just going to take that off the Thermomix and just scrape down the sides of the bowl. And just going to mix again, speed five, 30 seconds. And then you're going to take your pizza tray and pop it onto the scales. So once you've measured it, I like to take it off the scales and then just spread it around using your spatula. So the pizzas are all done. So again, we want to take them off the trays straight away. And we're going to put them in the bag like this. And again, one last cuddle, squeezing the air out of the bag. And put the label in the center. And there you go. All right. Don't want to watch it again. Oh, all right. OK. Whew. All right. So. Uh, I first took the Primal Alternative products to market in 2014. So this is the um, eighth year that the Primal Alternative brand has been out there, which means you get to jump on the moving Primal Alternative train of brand awareness. So when Primalistas show up at their first markets or go to their first stockist, um, customers will say, oh, great, Primal Alternative's here. And you know that building a business up from a standing start through word of mouth can take ages. Primal Alternative has the benefit of some serious industry leaders like paleo chef Pete Evans, Quirky Cooking's Joe Witten, Cindy O'Meara from Changing Habits, Mark Sisson from the Primal Blueprint, Helen Padrin pictured here with the wonderful Gita, the natural nutritionist Steph Lowe, Jordan Pye. Did you see Jordan? Um, are you following Jordan Pye? You've got to follow. She's so good, so helpful. Um, she does lots of swap this for that posts and primal alternative always comes up in the best um you know best swaps which is so cool you know um and having that credibility behind you when you go out into the world of business it is just oh it's like the biggest digital word of mouth leg up you could ever want and I really, that's, that's one of the things I really enjoy to do is to collaborate with industry leaders so that people find out more about you and your business and it drives more sales for you. So perfecting the recipes usually only takes one try before you're ready to sell. You may need to adapt the baking time as your oven uh, to, to your oven because all ovens are so different and you might find the odd recipe trickier than the others, but you'll find heaps of tips from other primalistas in our Facebook group to help you along the way. And now we're on to step four, getting ready to sell. So once you've perfected your recipes, it's time to look for avenues to sell your products. For baked goods, one of the most effective methods is selling via stockists. So that means a business that stocks and sells your product for a percentage of the profits. And you'll have identified some potential stockists on the call with either myself or the calls team. And now it's time to approach them. This can be super daunting for some primalistas who don't see themselves as salesy. But let me assure you that you do not need to be salesy. You just need to tell people about your products, also known as marketing, and make offers easy, right? And product sales that you can touch and taste are much easier than a concept or a service sell. We don't have a minimum order quantity either. So even though not every single potential stockist will say yes, it's easy for most of them to give us a go. And stockists really value local producers and customers value them supporting local too, which is another win-win of a non-local brand. So don't think of sales as bad. A business without sales is just a hobby. Everybody is in sales. Even teachers at high schools have to stand up in front of 15, a class of 15-year-olds 
they have to sell to them why they need to be interested in this concept that they're presenting to them, right? So oh, here we go. Oh, yeah, still on this one. That's all right. So when you get access to the primer list of resources, you'll find some super helpful tools to help you secure your first few stockists, including our amazing brochures. You'll also need to implement a marketing strategy to build your brand and reach your customers. You could look at starting up a social media channel, building a website and setting up a branded signage for a market stall or not. You don't need to do any of those things either. If you're like, oh, that sounds terrifying. You can just refer people to the Primal Alternative website for all the information. Super easy. Um, I have a Primal Lister, Primal Lister chicken. All she does is put on her uh, private, her personal Facebook page, not a business one. She just says, it's that time again, folks. Um, bake in what do you want. <laughs> she gets like a thousand dollars of sales. So yes. So in the resources section, you'll find over 500 professionally taken photos to use in your marketing, as well as social media prompts um, and, and, you know, um, tiles of um, reviews and stuff like that to sell, to share. Prime listers are producing super content all the time. So if you think, oh, I don't know what I'm going to post, you can just share the love and repost my content, repost their content, repost Jordan Pye's content too. One strategy many primalists find successful is influencer marketing. This is where you approach a social media influencer and offer them to give them some free products in return for an endorsement if they like the product. Think of it like a digital word of mouth. And if they have a lot of loyal followers, that word will spell, spread quickly. It doesn't need to be, you know, the next Joe Witten. It could be just your local farmer's market, your local... Um, you know, there's always like a local food hub kind of group. Just getting that word out that way for you could be really helpful. On to step five, buy your equipment and ingredients and start baking. So you're ready to start baking and selling your products. You will already have a lot of what you need in your kitchen. So I recommend a lean startup. Don't get shiny object syndrome. Keep it basic so you can start earning money in your business quicker um, and here's an outline of the equipment you're going to need and ingredients. So it can be very tempting to go out and purchase an entire kitchen's worth of equipment when you're starting out. But I recommend taking it easy. So your startup costs aren't too high. You can always purchase more equipment later on once you've started earning some money in your business. So to get started, make a list of the necessary equipment and work out what you don't have. Then visit some homeware stores or larger chains like Kmart or Spotlight to get what you need. A lot of these places also have common sales and they have afterpay and zip and places like things like that to help stagger the payments. So I've created a list here, which you can also find on the Primer List License FAQ page if you want to refer back to this after the webinar. Yeah. So a common mistake for bake from home business owners is that they spend too much money up front on shiny new equipment. Look, I'm not saying you shouldn't invest some money to ensure you have an adequate startup. Like you should, but it's a smart idea to start small and add bits as you go. The truth is that if you have the right recipes, you can bake delicious restaurant quality food from your own kitchen without needing all top of the wazza equipment. A clever way to reduce your upfront costs is to narrow down the variety of products that you start with. So that means you're going to need fewer pieces of equipment. As you begin to earn more money, you can expand the range and buy the necessary tools to bake more products. The exact equipment you will need for your business will depend on the type of food you're baking. To give you an idea, here's a list of um, equipment that I recommend for new primer listers and how much each item costs. So you will be able to sell on a lot of this equipment as well when you hang up your apron as a primer lister. So we've already, for ingredients, we've already found the most reliable, the best price suppliers in Australia to source your ingredients in bulk to cut down your costs and ensure that you always have quality ingredients to bake with. So purchase your dry ingredients from um, in bulk from a supplier on our supplier comparison spreadsheet, which you'll find on the resources page. And other ingredients like your butter, your eggs, honey and vegetables, 
from local suppliers like your farmers, health food shops or supermarkets. Organizing your equipment and ingredients is the final action you need to take to set up your business. With everything in place, your business registered, your supply chain sorted, your stockists ready to sell, and your marketing attracting customers, you'll be ready to start baking and make your first sale. So how is all of this sounding? If you think it all sounds too difficult to accomplish on your own, don't worry. You can always look for help to make life easier on yourself and increase your chances of success. That's why a Primalista uh, license comes with so many resources and support to help you every step of the way. We can help you set up your business, give you the recipes, provide marketing and sales training with templates, and give you lists of suppliers and stockists to source ingredients and sell your products. I've never had a Primalista fail to make a sale, and 75% of them achieve this milestone within their first month. To give you some idea of what you can expect when you become a Primalista, I've included some testimonials here. So this is Primalista Amy. She's my Primalista in Denmark. Uh, she bakes around three days a week, which is enough to earn her an annual revenue of around 46,000. And she takes six weeks holiday uh, in line with the school. So she's got three kids. She sells her products at local markets in health shops on social media, the Primal Alternative Shop and to friends and family. Her new business has enabled her to help provide for her family, quit the cleaning job that she hated, and it offers her the flexibility to spend more time with her kids. She says, it feels like a dream that I can earn money doing something that I love, while at the same time being able to be at home for my family. Um, and she also says, having not started quite two months ago, she's been it's nearly two and a half years now, I've been blown away with how instant the cash flow was. It's helped me provide and add to my family's income. How good is that? All right. So let's have a look at a couple of other Primalista case studies. All right. So Primalista Rosie, uh, she's in her fifth year now. I need to update my slides, don't I? Um, but in her third year, her business was turning over 70,000. It's probably much more now. She bakes three and a half days a week and she takes six weeks annual leave. Let's hear from Rosie. Knew immediately that I was that I wanted to do Primal Alternative as soon as I heard it, as soon as I heard about it and read a little bit about it. I knew that I could do it. Um, be, and the reason being is that everything, like all the startup things, were well, you know, all the all the bits and pieces, all the legalities, all the all the technicalities um, are already were already done. Um, uh, if I had had to start from scratch, if I'd had to um, do the logo and the um, deal with council by myself, or even you know knowing that you have to deal with the council, um, I I would not have had the confidence to do it. Um, so if I was to say, um, so I I didn't have a dream of having my own business. Um, I knew um, before I started Primal Alternative that. Um, I, I knew that I wasn't where I wanted to be in life. I knew that um, I wasn't aligned with the profession I was in, um, but I didn't know how to get out of it. And then Primal Alternative gave me this amazing, incredible uh, reason and um, path to get to move from where I was to where I wanted to be. And I knew that, and. I knew that I wanted to be with Primal Alternative. I knew that I could do it. Um, uh, I just, yeah, like I said, if I'd had to do it all by myself, I would not, I, I would have really struggled to, to overcome the feeling of not being, of the lack of confidence in, in myself. <laughs> Love Rosie. All right. Uh, another study from Primalista Shah. This is when she was in her first year. She's currently on a baking break, which I think is a wonderful feature of this opportunity as well, because we don't know what's around the corner and what cool opportunities are going to come our way as we're on, always on a journey of personal expansion, right? Um, so she is currently doing her master's. She's, you can take a baking break for 18 months. Uh, you, your membership reduces right down and uh, just means that you can save your investment of your license and go off and do something else and come back to baking later. 
So can you earn enough money to live off is the question. But I think once you um, start forming relationships with a couple of good stockers and really uh, when I first started, I thought I would need five or seven or 10 stockers, uh, but I've got two and they keep me plenty busy uh, to do two and a half um, to three days a week. If you take in, into consideration the admin that goes along with, um, with running a business yourself and the deliveries, etc. cetera. But um, yeah, I, I think you, you start to build a good relationship with your, um, whole, your suppliers and it just becomes a repetitive business. So I've got a supplier um, who's incredible. Uh, it's an online organic farmer's market that um, they don't just buy, purchase or order the products from me. Um, they market the hell out of my product and out of me and they'll showcase stuff about me or um, about the product. And they'll, you know, like, I think my first order with them in the first week was a hundred different products. So, I think building that relationship with people and with, with, um, with other groups, uh, pr especially in um, businesses where it's about developing women and women working together, um, that will translate into um, the, the income that you're looking to get. Um, so just from the stockist on one day work a week, I basically earn more than what I ever did working in the corporate environment in one day. So if you took a day by day comparison, um, yeah, so. All right. Moving on. We'll fluctuate. We'll oh. fluctuate. All right. Okay. So what you must do if you want to grow your side hustle in the, to a full-time business. Now, Forbes magazine says a side hustle is more than just another stream of income. It's also the new job security. And whether you're a mom who wants to earn some income in your free time, what's that? Or someone with a full-time job that's looking for a career change, starting a side hustle is a great way to turn your love for food into a living. If you know what you're doing and put in the hard work, something that starts as a side hustle could quickly transform into a full-time business that provides a better life for you and your family. Not only would it be a successful business, meaning that you could get paid to do something you love every day, but it would enable you to be your own boss. And you could choose the hours you work, decide when you want to take a break, go to that nine o'clock Pilates class and never miss a social commitment or important family moment just because of work. Growing a side hustle into a full-time business is a certain possibility, but it will take time and work on your behalf. And there are two non-negotiable aspects of business um, that you need to get right in order to accomplish this. And they are, oh, look, oh, look at this, I had a lovely slide for you. Right, yeah, so you, you must have an in-demand product. So your products need to be both high quality and in-demand. We've done the market research. We're sure there's a market. We've perfected the product so that it stands out from the competition. Of course, the easiest way to ensure you have an in-demand product is to sell products from an established brand that you know already works like Primal Alternative. Our products are healthy, delicious, and already have an established market. In fact, 100% of Primalistas say that there is definitely a market for Primal Alternative products. The second non-negotiable aspect that you need to get right is loyal customers. If you want a successful bake from home business, loyal customers are crucial. It's better to fo first focus on building up a strong base of regular customers rather than trying to sell as many products as you can. The more customers that you can get who incorporate your product into their regular diet, the higher your chance of success. Repeat business, will help provide steady sales even when the economy hits a rough patch. And even during this last three years of whatever it's been, stagflation, pandemic, Primalistas have reported record sales, proving that even during a crisis, people's values around food don't change. One of the best things about becoming a Primalista is that you can tap into an existing market to sell your products. Plus, with a range of yummy, healthy recipes that are suitable for people with allergies and intolerances, primal alternative foods are suitable for vegan, paleo, low-carb, low-FODMAP, 
and grain and wheat free diet. So we really have got something for everyone. We've even got an online store. So you'll be able to take orders as soon as you're set up. And da, 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 where are we? You really, the key thing that I really want to say is to be really clear on your why. Don't listen to the naysayers who say things like, nobody will pay $16.50 for a loaf of bread or the mean girl who says it won't work for you. Set healthy boundaries and be really realistic. If you only have half a day free to bake, let's just start your business in that half a day that you've got available. Now, there are some awesome tools as part of the bonuses. One in particular is my business blueprint which will talk basically a coaching session to guide you through all the doubts and fears, your why. It's really important to get really clear on why you're doing this because that will be an anchor for you when you hit a, you know, a speed bump. And it will help you really um, set those boundaries and structure the business um, into a way that suits your lifestyle. So let's look at the most common mistakes of new business owners. So starting a business is an exciting journey, but it's also, it's challenging, right? And it can feel overwhelming. But the good thing about overwhelm is it means you're growing and you will feel overwhelmed. And I like to see overwhelm as a good sign now. I think, oh, I'm expanding. I'm doing something new and it's scary. And that's good. But sadly, too many businesses, new business owners, fail to perform their due diligence and quickly run into trouble. In fact, according to the Australian Bureau of Statistics, more than 60% shut up shop in the first three years. So what are the most common mistakes of new business owners and how can you mitigate that risk so your business doesn't end up on the scrap heap? Let's take a look uh, at how you can steer clear of the costly errors and keep yourself on the path to success. Going it alone. Many new business owners do the lone ranger route and they don't seek the help they need when starting out. Instead, they try to cover every area of business themselves. This leads to expensive mistakes, which ultimately cost them their dream. Finding other people who can offer guidance and advice will help you enormously when you start in business. That's why I provide so many resources for every new primalista, uh, every new primalista. delicious recipes, baking demo videos, supplier and stockist information, marketing templates, sales training, and even one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. It means you're never alone when you're starting out and you can steer clear of mistakes and implement proven strategies to help grow your business. And just as a side note to that, having a business that's taking care of all of the um, nuances and uh, changes that come up with Food Standards Australia, as an example, they've implemented three new label changes. Well, they're going to be implementing them in 2024. But keeping ahead of that, having all of that taken care of, it's a costly job to rejig all the labels with the graphic designer, but it's more costly to have non-compliant labels. So it's very nice to, to know that's all taken care of. You don't have to lose sleep at three o'clock in the morning worrying about your labels. <laughs> Failing to plan. I'll just worry about them on your behalf. Failing to plan. I touched on this earlier, but it's really important because it can save you a lot of trouble down the line. It's far more difficult and costly to make substantial changes to your business six months after, reg after you register it. So coming up with a clear plan for your business before you register, including what you intend to bake, who your target market is, the number of hours you want to put in, and what your budget is. A thorough business plan can help you avoid any nasty surprises and forge a clearer path to success. Primalisters get to um, go through the My Business Blueprint, uh, as I mentioned before. And before we make offers to new Primalisters, we always do our due diligence with regards to planning. We look at your time, your earnings. We check there are enough potential stockers for you in your area. And finally, pricing your products incorrectly. Uh, I did it. This mistake is so common for bake from home businesses. And it's understandable because it's such a tricky subject, right? And, and because you know, you know, um, that you, you're doing something that you love, we sometimes feel guilty about charging for doing for doing it right. And I see so many foodies start and quickly exit 
food businesses because they don't charge enough or they don't know the right cost of goods sold equations to nail their pricing. And, you know, you don't want to overprice because you could scare away potential customers and pricing them too low will see you losing money instead of turning a profit. So it can be very tricky to know exactly what price to set. That's why I give each new Primer Lister pricing guidelines. It enables them to set, set the optimal price for each product so that they maximize their profits. I'd love to share with you the profit margins so you can decide for yourself if you think this is a viable business model. Now, if you want to um, look at these pie charts again, there is a really awesome page on the website. How much can I earn as a primer lister? How much can I earn as a primer lister and primal alternative? And it'll come up on, on a Google search. So as you can see, on average, uh, the pricing uh, is the same for each product. On average, if you're selling directly to retail, you will be getting about 65% gross profit. And if you're selling to um, a stockist, uh, it would be more around the 35 to 40%. Prime listers have a mixture of wholesale and retail sales. So on average, your gross profit will be half of what your sales are. So if you want to get another $500 uh, cash coming into the household a week, you'd be looking to do about $1,000 worth of sales. That's something else that we'll go through in more detail with you on the Prime Lister call. Right, let's go over the membership so you can determine if this business is suited to your budget. And I'm going to share with you the bonuses currently on offer and the amazing seven day cooling off guarantee. So the Primer Lister membership includes the license fee and the first year membership. And the price is um, on a payment plan, $620 a month for the first 12 months, and then just $120 a month after that. Or you can pay up front and save $500 and pay $5,500 and then $120 a month after that. There's also a joining fee of $1,000. And as I was mentioning at the start of the session, there are like wicked bonuses, man. So you get these bonuses, which are worth over $1,700. And I'm so stoked to be offering these seriously, because ever since I started the license, everyone used to say, can we have a starter kit? And I was like, oh, it's too much hassle. I don't know how to do a starter kit. But now we've got one. And it includes an organic fair trade primal alternative apron with your name and state on it. A one-on-one -on -one coaching session to have with me whenever you want six primal alternative bread tins, 200 compostable cellophane bags, and over 220, actually, it's not 100, 220 personalized labels for your first few bags. So that's valued at over $670, actually, even more shipped out. There's also over $1,000 of digital bonuses, including my signature health coaching courses, Thrive and Set for Life, my Business Blueprint, that amazing 18-page downloadable PDF to help you create a thriving business on your term, terms, and Aligning for Success, which is an EFT tapping course, which is a really brilliant way to help unblock the, the obvious and they will come up limiting beliefs that's that will just they just come up it's part of growth <laughs> when you start your own business um you also have the amazing support of the primer list of sisterhood um uh, manda if you're still there in the background just put a little comment in about how awesome the group is it truly is a really collaborative community of like-minded women smart women bright women just like you who have had a health crisis have healed want to help others um, and want to help you succeed. Everybody wants everybody to do well. It's really nice. So for peace of mind, there's a seven day cooling off guarantee. So that just means when you join, you have a full seven days to try all the materials and start setting up your, your business. And if at any point during those first seven days, you decide it's not for you, just let me know and we'll provide you with a full refund. No questions asked. So the next step after this call is, after this call, after this session is to book your free 30-minute Primalista call. We've got times available on evenings, weekends, and every day of the week except Monday for some reason. Nobody wants to talk to you on a Monday. <laughs> 
So um, that link again is primal alternative forward slash call. Now, before we get into the end and I'm kind of going, uh, so happy you have the label stress itch, not me. Yes, I know. <laughs> so helpful. My new family is what Amanda said about the primalista sisterhood. It's such a gorgeous, gorgeous um, group. So we've got final time for you to answer any, uh, ask any questions and stick around because I haven't forgotten about my lucky prize winner for my live attendees. So while you're just letting all of that sink in and thinking, hmm, what, what concerns have I got or what questions have I got that she hasn't covered? Let me know. And I'm going to leave you with this really cool to music survey. Turn it up, sister. Turn it up. Have a little dance. Awesome question in there from Neroli. Thank you for that question. And um, the question was, can we change the recipes uh, to make them, for example, dairy free? So no, the recipes need to be, you've got to stick to the recipes. So it's, it crushes your flair in the kitchen, <laughs> but also um, means that your nutrition information panels are correct. Your labels are correct. Your pricing is correct. So you do need to stick to the recipes. Otherwise, um, yeah, the model doesn't work. We do have dairy-free options available, though, in the range. So not everything's dairy-free, not everything's low-carb, not everything's vegan, but we do have options. Great question from Lynn. Bookwork, admin, structure, setup. Um, look, it's a very straightforward business. It is ingredients in, products out. So um, you can do the bookwork to be as high-tech or low-tech based on your preferences. So um, there are some free apps that you can download for invoicing. Um, you could also just send um, something on an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, I used to just use the invoice books from the post office, you know, the blue books, and just give everything to a tax accountant at the end of the year. Um, yeah, so we do have an accountant in the group um, who will be able to help with any accounting questions, <laughs> um, but really up to you as to how you do it. So before I call the lucky door prize winner, I just want to thank you so much for taking the time to join me on this webinar, whether you've turned up live or whether you're watching this um, as a replay. And I really hope you found this information helpful. And if you do take the plunge and decide to start your own Primalista business, I really hope that your journey is as fulfilling and awesome as mine has been. And, you know, with the right support from the Primalista community, I'm sure it will be. Through this webinar, you've learned powerful and valuable information that when applied will change your business and your life forever. 
If you'd like to find out more information about becoming a Primer Lister and how you can gain all the recipes, tools and technique, techniques that you need for success, then I'd love to meet you for a Primer Lister call. The calls are super fun and casual. We'll discuss your goals for your freedom-based business and we'll outline exactly what you need to do to get your business off the ground and get your first sale as soon as possible. However, all the information and steps covered in this webinar are worthless if you don't take action. If there's one thing I want to impress upon you, it's the importance of taking action. Don't wait to be ready. There's no such thing as ready. There's only now. There's no Nirvana future of more time and more money. So don't put off your dream of being your own boss. If you don't take action, something else will grab your attention and you'll be off looking for the next strategy, the next tactic or silver bullet for your situation. I urge you to put the blinkers on and take action. And if you do, I can assure you, you'll reap the rewards and find the solution to the reason you showed up today. Building a successful business allows you to manifest your craziest dreams. You deserve this success. And you truly can have it all, despite the naysayers. I invite you on this journey and look forward to celebrating your success and hearing how becoming your own boss has transformed your life. So take that next step on your journey and book your Primer List a call. Right, now I'm going to pull the lucky door prize winner. Make sure it's not Manda. It is Neroli. No, Rolly Galvin is the door prize winner. How awesome is that? Congratulations, Neroli. So if you could please um, send an email to primalalternative.com. No, info at primalalternative.com. <laughs> Neroli, please, with your address and a phone number so prime listers can get in touch to organize drop off you will be getting some delicious primal alternative goodies dropped off to your door. Right now I did go over a little bit. So um, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. And hopefully we will see your name pop up in the Primalista um, calls diary. And we can't wait to talk to you then. Have a gorgeous rest of your day. Bye for now.